we've got a few uh, notes concerning some players coming back or switching positions. We got uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba. Steve, uh, back healthy, ready to play, or hopefully healthy and ready to play, but uh, we'll be playing this Saturday, we're being told. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to believe about that because – I was at the stadium, saw him go deep on that pass route and come up lame and never went back in the game and was trying to run as if the play count thing that they tried to tell us wasn't a factor. Like, why would he be over there running up and down the sideline if he wasn't trying to go back into the game? And Believe me, if they could have gotten 10 more plays out of him, they would have gladly uh, taken it. He conveniently played 22 plays. And conveniently, 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 we're told he was a 20, 20 play pitch count. Right. So, um, you know, I guess we'll see. Uh, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday are their two big practice days. If you don't make it out on the field Tuesday and Wednesday, it's not likely that you're going to practice or that you're going to play in the game on Saturday. And I think they'd love to have him out there if he's available just because he gives them one more option. And you never know what's going to happen. I mean, they're big three right now. Fleming, Buca, and Harrison are just all playing at such a high level right now that uh, you don't even worry about it, that uh, the final score of the game is not impacted whether Jackson Smith, the Jigma, plays in one play or 40. So uh, he has five catches in parts of three games. And uh, this is not uh, the junior year that he or Ryan Day or Kevin Wilson or Brian Hartline had in mind for him. And you wonder about his stock. Uh, one of the guys I was sitting with at the press conference yesterday kind of muttered that he's a, quote, inside slot receiver with no tape shown from an outside receiver position. So he's probably not as coveted as an NFL draft pick as a lot of Ohio State people might think. I don't honestly know what they want or what they look for. Uh, you know, the last I saw, he was in the teens, probably in the first round. Uh, but, you know, I haven't looked in several weeks. So him not playing, you know, does does that impact his draft stock too, which I think is part and parcel of what's going through his mind when he's over there curiously trying to run up and down the sideline to prove to everybody, I'm okay, I can go back in. He needs to play in his mind. So uh, he probably feels he's losing millions of dollars by not playing. So uh, I asked Kevin Wilson yesterday, is this kind of like a guy running alongside the train that's going down the track at 30 miles per hour and he's furiously trying to latch onto the caboose and get onto the, to the, to the train as it's going down the track without him. And, uh, you know, does the train have to slow down to squeeze him in there and force the ball into him and hope to get him going? And yet you got to win football games and look good doing it and all these other things that you got to do uh, in college football. So a lot of masters to serve there. But, uh, Kevin, you were at the game. What was your take on it? I, I didn't come away – feeling real optimistic that uh, he'd be back this week already, but coach is saying they're hoping. Yeah. I, I don't know what level of subterfuge this is or, or whatever is going on with it because I mean, it wasn't like he immediately, you know, that he was screaming in pain or anything, but he obviously looked like he was uncomfortable and then they were stretching him and they were dealing with him and he, I mean, he wanted to go back out there, but you know, that's competitors want to compete. I mean, that's, should come as no surprise and then we go into you know we go to the post game and you know we get kind of get this the you know the cursory oh, he, no it was a pitch count and everything else i'm like okay well we'll get to tuesday and you know they'll, they'll say he had some sort of setback or something like that so they're not necessarily inaccurate with what they said on saturday and can kind of maybe you know foam the runway a little bit that he may not go and you know they they double down on it so you know, we'll see. I mean, maybe, you know, maybe we just are misreading the situation. But from everything I saw, I was like, well, we'll be lucky to see him again before Michigan at that point. So, you know, I don't know. Um, I think the biggest thing is going into the Penn State game, kind of knowing what your personnel is going to be. So there's not just this, you know, 900 
pound monster in the room of will will Jackson play or will Jackson not play or whatever. And if you if you're going to be doing it with Abuka and 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 Harrison and and Fleming, you know, go go forward in that because you know what I guarantee you, Julian Fleming is going to want to show out against Penn State, being a Pennsylvania native, uh, Penn State being the other school that was heavily involved in his recruitment. He is going to have something to prove. So regardless of what the lineup is going to be, you know, feed Julian. Yeah. Same with Big Marv. He's going to want to do it as well. He's from Philly. Right. And uh, uh, I'd never heard of the place uh, Fleming was from, uh, Catawissa, Pennsylvania, Southern Columbia. I Is that in the Harrisburg area maybe down that way, I think? I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a good geographer. I, I know how to go to Penn State from here. I know all the yeah. little bergs and towns and everything else to get to. to 70 get to, to Bedford, make a left, go north, yeah. sit in traffic for two days. and Get, on, 90, get on 99 and get off on like toff trees or something like yeah, that. Yeah, toff trees or whatever that is over there. I love going to Penn State, by the way, other than in the 90s when we went. It was like, oh, we're so glad to be part of the Big Ten. Here, have a hot dog. Here, have a beer you know, whatever. But then Ohio State started beating their brains in year after year after year. And now they're shoving Ohio State people down and they're throwing uh, bags of urine on the Ohio State band and, you know, doing these kind of uh, uh, boorish type things. I think as as Joe Paterno got got became older in the 2000s and his influence, he, he didn't speak as much publicly and his influence on the fan base became less and less and less in his last five or 10 years, some boorish behavior kind of took over over there, but it used to be uh, one of the great places to go uh, to watch a game, but uh, you know, kind of digress on that, but uh, looking forward to a raucous noon start there at the Beave on Saturday should be fun. Staying 90 minutes out. So, you know, that'll start the day that much earlier and everything else. And it's hard to justify staying Saturday night as well. So Saturday, will be at 0500. Saturday is going to be a long day. Yep. 